When you forgot how to make decisions on your own, when you forgot your position on your throne, when you forgot your close sense of home, always remember to forgive yourself first. When you remember how it started and for how long, when you remember that you were young and they were grown, when you remember that you went right along, never forget to forgive yourself first. As you dry the tears from your eyes, and remember all of the lies, remember you no longer have to shed those muted heartbreak cries. Forget what you were taught. You staying was not your fault. You deserve to forgive yourself first. Put down the umbrella, learn to dance in the rain. Embrace your scars, you are more than your pain. Free your spirit and reclaim your name. Remember you deserve to forgive yourself first. Regardless of the abuse or we stand in your truth, you don't need physical marks or to show any proof. You got yourself out and have probably seen the worst. Always remember to forgive yourself first. Welcome to Community Voices. I'm Michelle Richardson, Program Director of the Wellness Center at Prince George's Community College. I want to thank the poetic pair, PGCC graduate Chantelle Walker and her partner, Shai. Throughout this program, we'll use poetry to center our thoughts on healing as we focus on the debilitating problem of domestic violence. We aim to empower survivors offer resources, and inspire positive actions to those in need. Today we speak with law enforcement experts, our public-private advocates, our resilient survivors, as Prince George's County shows their support of the Purple Light Nights Initiative for Domestic Violence Awareness. Let's welcome our guests to Community Voices today. We have Prince George's County Sheriff Melvin High, Colonel Darren Palmer, the law enforcement experts on domestic violence for our county. We also have Lieutenant Barbara Smith of the PGCC Campus Police. Thank you all for being here. Our pleasure. We're going to start the conversation with the Sheriff's Office. Sheriff High, can you tell us what services your office provides for those who might be experiencing domestic violence or for those who have loved ones who might be experiencing domestic violence? Well, thank you for allowing us to be with you this day. Um, the Sheriff's Office, through its Domestic Violence Intervention Division, which includes our Special Victims Assistance, mm -hmm. provides a comprehensive range of services to victims of domestic violence. First, uh, crisis intervention and 911 response, mm -hmm. critically important. But then that's followed up by um, early intervention for information, referrals for uh, counseling, legal services. And then um, we provide the service through, so that all victims, no matter what their challenge is, will be aided. Right. Um, we provide um, court assistance, we provide um, referrals for housing. We ensure that victims are comfortable and are accompanied through the court process, so that's not a scary process for them. Right. And uh, they can then take advantage of all of the services that the county provides. And so uh, we've tried to provide a range of services to assist victims with whatever their concern is around domestic violence. Oh. I would just uh, offer to our uh, viewers that uh, an important service is to assist victims in pursuing a peace or protective order. Okay. They have uh, uh, the capacity to aid victims and to improve safety. Okay. The last point I'd make is that we assist victims in providing a safety plan for themselves so that they can move from harm's way 
to a safe place. Thank you, Sheriff. I appreciate that. And I'm sure our viewers do as well. So thank you for that information and all that you do for our community. All right. Thank you. Colonel Palmer, would you please explain to us the difference, Sheriff Hyde mentioned it, the difference between a peace order and a protective order? Certainly. Let me start by talking about the similarities. Um, okay. Both peace orders and protective orders are civil orders that are issued by the court. Okay. And they direct one person to refrain from committing acts against another person. Okay. Protective orders generally relate to individuals that are related by blood, mm -hmm. marriage, and adoption. They also apply to people who are living together, those who have children in common, or those who have been involved in a sexual relationship within the last year. Okay. Protective orders also apply to both vulnerable adults and any individual who has been um, a victim of uh, sexual violence. Okay. Peace orders then apply to everyone else. Okay. So uh, friends, co-workers, neighbors, uh, even strangers, uh, all, all can apply for a peace order. Peace orders and protective orders can be obtained during the regular business work week hours at the courthouse in Upper Marlboro or the courthouse in Hyattsville. On off hours, evenings, weekends, holidays, you would apply at the commissioner's office in Upper Marlboro, located at the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. and in Hyattsville, uh, located at the Regional uh, Justice Center. And I would just kind of bring that to a close that the peace and protective orders, as I said, are civil orders, right. but the violation of a peace or protective order is criminal okay. and can result in someone's arrest. Thank you, Colonel. That is uh, very helpful for our, our viewers. Uh, I just learned a few things myself, <laughs> so thank you for that. Certainly. Um, Lieutenant Smith, thank you for joining us along with the Sheriff and Colonel Palmer. Um, we know that we have now a new app at the college, uh, the OwlSafe app that is also available for the community. Would you share some uh, information about what the OwlSafe app is and how it can be used? So that is one of our biggest push right now with DPS. We are trying to get our students, staff, and faculty to actually download the app through the App Store or Google app. Um, if you have an iPhone, it's right there in the App Store. You can download it and it's free. Um, one of the biggest things when we're talking about domestic violence, mm -hmm. it actually brings it together. You know, a lot of our victims, some of them sometimes, they don't want to report incidents and they actually want to get the help, mm -hmm. but they don't want to um, speak about it because they are ashamed. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a app inside the OWL app where you can request for a friend to, to walk with you. And when I say walk with you, you can share your location with them. They will get a link and they will see exactly your location and if you make it to your location or not. And let's say someone's been stalking you and you haven't reported that to anyone and that person actually shows up. You can hit the panic button and your friend will be able to hit call the police and a police officer will respond to your location. One of the things too, Al Alert. We want everyone to still sign up for Owl Alert, and you can still do that within the app. You can report anonymous tips. A lot of folks do not want to give their name. Mm -hmm. You could put it right in the app. It'll send it right to DPS. Officers will respond. It gives you information about the code blue boxes. We have over 50 code blue boxes here on campus in the parking lots, in the buildings, in the classrooms. Actually, you can actually hit the emergency button on your phone and it'll take you right to Department of Public Safety. One of the things that we are pushing, if you see something, say something. We want everyone to speak up, you know, use the app. Let us know what's going on because we are here for the college community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sheriff High. Colonel Palmer and Lieutenant Smith. Each of you gave us significant information that I'm certain our viewers and others in our community who may be in crisis or helping those who are in crisis can benefit from. If you or someone you know are in need of help, contact the Prince George's County Sheriff's Office. The number is on your screen. Also, we encourage you to download the Owl Safe app from Prince George's Community College. When we return, we talk with our community advocates and our poetry continues. Oh yeah, don't let your fears hold you back. 
Prepare for what's next at Prince George's Community College. Train for the career of your dreams and secure your future. Earn an associate degree or a certificate and you can start pursuing your passion today. Love is ebb and flow, always washing my heart sure. I am not alone. Infinite water expands consciousness and drips for love-starved cacti. Welcome back to Community Voices. I really love the poetic intros. That was Miss Faith Nelson, author of The Water Therapy. Faith is one of our literary students. Thank you, Faith. Joining us for this segment is Lieutenant Barbara Smith, again from the college's campus police. Then we have Shai Scharer, founder and president of Fighting Injustice Standing Together, or FIST, an organization providing tools, resources, and care to currently and formerly incarcerated women. And finally, this is Ms. Gabrielle Parson, a services coordinator from the nonprofit Community Crisis Services, Inc. Lieutenant Smith, we work together a lot. Tell me what you do when a domestic violence situation occurs. First thing first, I do my best not to overwhelm the victim. You don't want to stress them out when they've just been in a situation that has caused trauma. But I make sure to let them know about the resources and I let them know that I'm here for them. Um, and then I connect them to you, Michelle. And you know, sometimes we may go together and take them to the courthouse and, and give them the ride and, and transportation that they need or stand by if it's something that they need to get their belongings and work with the county. Mm -hmm. But most importantly is to let them know that we are here for them and they are not alone. That's awesome. Well, your work, you know, in, our, in us working together, you have been, your compassion and your empathy, not just your expertise come through. So you are a, definitely a treasure in this area for our college. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, let's find out about FIST. Shai, can you tell us about your organization and how it helps currently and formerly incarcerated women? Sure, absolutely. So we have three programs within FIST. And we have the Prison of Poetry Pipeline, which is a 15 to 20 week course, which is an in-person course as well. And we teach women spoken word poetry and stage presence. And at the end of that, they put on a showcase for the entire institution. And then we also have the Art Express program, which is a program that was created because of COVID. And so they have three, they have three uh, art disciplines within that. We have um, visual arts, poetry, and theater within that. And then that's a six month course and we teach women those three art disciplines within that. And then our newest program is the HOME program, which stands for Housing Opportunities, Mental Health, and Employment. And so that program is for women who are returning from incarceration. And when they get in touch with us, we link them to different resources throughout the community. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I know that the statistics for incarcerated women as associated with domestic violence is, is very high. So we are grateful for the work that you're doing. That is mm -hmm. awesome work, particularly with the arts, which we know can be very healing. So mm -hmm. thank you for all of the work that you're doing with FIST. Well, thank you. And speaking of healing, Ms. Gabby Parson, what type of resources does the Community Crisis Services offer to survivors of domestic violence? Sure, so we do uh, provide a few programs for victims that are experiencing domestic violence. We do operate the safe house here in Prince George's County and a lot of people don't know about that as a resource. Um, so there is a safe haven for them to go to if they are fleeing a, an abusive partner. Um, and while there, they are receiving case management services that can connect them to more long-term housing programs, um, connect them to legal resources or getting custody of their children. And then also, you know, they have experienced trauma. So, you know, we try to connect them to counseling services or therapy. Um, we also provide those same services for victims who are in the community mm -hmm. who need the same services and the same support, but they have some place to stay. And to get connected to these services, we do operate the 24-hour hotline mm -hmm. um, for Prince George's County. So for any victim that needs to reach out at any time, it's available to them. And then we also operate the um, chat line, which we also started during the pandemic. Um, we wanted to make sure that our services were accessible to victims who were stuck in the home with their abuser. We've actually seen an increase in male survivors and victims during the pandemic. 
um, and we've been able to um, assist them all. And so I just want to take a moment to encourage any male out there that's seeking services. We are able to provide all of those same services um, for male victims. That does include the Safe House, our community-based program, awesome. mm -hmm. and all of our other services. As you know, the Safe House, um, I don't think I knew about that. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share just a little bit more just to tell people what that means? What is a Safe House and how does someone um, just in general, how do they transition into that? Do they come directly through the Crisis Services Center? Sure. So we do, like I said, we answer the 24-hour hotline. Mm -hmm. So if they need to go into the safe house, they can call that. And as soon as they call that hotline, if they need to go in, we safety plan with them in that moment. Um, that is the most dangerous time for any victim is leaving their situation. So we're safety planning with them, making sure that they have a safe plan. If, the, if it's not at that moment, we'll come up with um, whatever date or time they feel like feel would be safest and they can come in at that time. If it's right then and there at that moment, mm -hmm. we'll help them to get there. We do provide transportation for them to get to the safe house at that moment if they need to. Thank you so much for the services you provide to our students, survivors, and victims in the county. Domestic violence is a scourge in our society. It has no borders, no boundaries, and survivors are forever changed by it. If you're in need of help and don't know where to turn, there are several options available in Prince George's County. PGCC's own wellness center here at the Largo campus is here to help. Call Community Crisis Services for support. The number is listed on your screen. And there is hope for incarcerated women with FIST. Visit the website that is also listed on the screen. Coming up next, PGCC's wellness center counselor, Dr. Danielle Bryant, facilitates survivor stories from a poet's pen to a filmmaker's latest release by way of her short film. Community Voices continues after these short messages. Start training for a career as a paramedic at Prince George's Community College. Learn how to be a first responder, helping to save lives in your community. Earn your degree or certificate at PGCC and start working on the front lines of emergency medicine. For more information, visit pgcc.edu. Breathe courage deeply. Tell the reptilian brain, roll on your back now. Golden-tongued wisdom whispers at my plexus door. Humbling love letter. Hello. I am Dr. Danielle LaShore Bryant. Please join me in welcoming my guest today, Pioneer the Poet, as well as Turcola Durham, actress turned filmmaker. Hello, ladies. How are you this Hello. evening? Hello. Wonderful. Doing well. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. So, Pioneer, please tell us how the, your experience with domestic violence informed your work with uh, your book, To the Goddess in My Garden. My whole mantra is always, art saves lives. My own experience was horror, mm -hmm. to say the least. And I got to a space where I knew that one day I was going to close my eyes and I wasn't gonna wake up anymore. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't anything that was like this whole epiphany. It just was. And I got some of the best advice. And it was, you know, anytime this is haunting you, Anytime you can't seem to let it go, it's no longer yours. Somebody else needs it. I'm powerful. I'm great. But somehow I shrunk and silenced myself. Now I take it back. So to the goddess in my garden, it is a book of poetry and self-reflection. Um, it is my purpose. It is my alignment. It is my gift because it's what I'm supposed to do. But I know healing is a never ending journey. So I write and I save myself every day and hopefully that reaches somebody that lets them know it's okay and it saves them as well. Well, saving it, it, it has. The poems and the stories and the experiences within the book really resonate. Uh, and I hope that others can uh, take from it what you've poured into it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Tercola, let's talk about your filmmaking, yes. shall we? Yes. You have a film coming out. Can you tell us about it? Yes, um, the film called Strip from Insanity. Um, it will premiere at the Hoyts West Nursery Cinema. We're going to see a trailer yes. of your work? Yes. Excellent. I hated AJ, and at the same time, I loved him. Or I thought I loved him. I love you too. Were you saying that AJ put his hands on you? That didn't happen until after we got married. I love so hard. God, why do I love so hard? It's really special to me. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, I was given this title in 2006. Some of the most hor horrific times of my life. You know, I tried to write and I tried, you know, get things out on paper and I couldn't. So it wasn't until I became an actress four years ago and I started to get familiar, you know, about filming and things of that nature, and I decided I will make it a film. I wasn't prepared for the fact that I'm about to heal because I had suppressed it for so long. Um, not loving myself, having low self-esteem, but believing that I wasn't good enough because I allowed someone to say all these things and take their word for truth. But as the walls began to go down, what I went through in my past, it allowed me to receive more love, you know, from suppressing to I thought I was healed. I thought that I had forgiven this person. I had forgiven myself. I hadn't dealt with it the way I should have dealt with it. And so in making this film, you know, I feel so much lighter, you know. It, it does bring back memories, like she said, now, healing is a nonstop journey. You're going to continue to heal. I still have triggers to this day, but I tend to know how to work through them now, you know. So by making this film, I just want to touch lives. I want what I went through, you know, others to see that, that I can make it, that I'm living, I'm happy, I have joy. What a powerful testimony from both of you from both of you. And what I'm hearing is something that um, many survivors of domestic violence talk about, that sense of loss of self yes. during this experience. And yet I'm, I'm also hearing the journey that you all took to come back into yourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, It's painful and you will crawl and cry and the re-triggering is a thing, but you're armed with the toolbox to get through it. And you just, you constantly, every single day, find a way to say, yep, nope, I'm not doing this. Mm. This is not what I signed up for. I'm going to keep pushing through this. And it'll hurt, but you do it anyway. Yeah, I think it's important to have someone that you can trust that helps you get through. Because we should not be going through this alone. Um, and I find myself going through domestic violence. I was embarrassed because I was known as the strong individual as a strong woman and it was embarrassing that I allowed someone to come into my space and pretty much take over my life you know and that's one thing that I did without bringing someone in to say hey this is what I'm going through you know it wasn't until the moment when I decided I wanted to to attempt suicide that I realized I needed someone to help me through and, and so it makes a difference when you have someone to say, hey, you don't have to go through this by yourself, you know? Days you wanna cry, I'm here. The days you feel like you wanna give up, I'm here. And it really, really helps a lot.
Excellent. Well, it's certainly a testament to the profession that I'm in. So I definitely uh, appreciate the plug because as counselors, we do um, seek to help those who are struggling with whatever journey. And we work to make sure that it's non-judgmental, which you need at that point. Mm -hmm. You don't need someone else giving uh, their opinions and ideas about your circumstances and situations. So thank you so much for what it is that you do. Pioneer, we're going to get a performance from you to close out the show. So we're looking forward to that. And then um, Turcola, we will look forward to your screening. Absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you both today. Thank you. Thank you. To the girl who learned to be quiet, not make waves, apologize often for discrepancies that weren't yours, taught to hoard and bottle your feelings, Seal your lips and submit your face. Origami fold your mouth into smile. Temper attitude so you avoid conflict. Simmer so as to not burn. Speak loudly. Your voice is power, full of thunder. A storm that quakes the quiet earth. Do not be afraid of the upset it causes, the tables it turns over, ships it sinks with its bulk. The ocean is never afraid to throw waves at the sand so you will not shrink violet, but bloom burgeoning and vibrant because if it's one thing I know, your silence will be a rocking chair in a room full of lazy boys with expectations that will turn you trough, holding possessions that aren't yours, trained to lie down and take it, be rug, doormat, collapsing into yourself until you are creased with apologies you never meant, wrangled till you're spent and have nothing left but the shell, damaged goods left with a scarlet letter in a room full of emails, your voice a forgotten chime, lost in the wind, you are not a victim, just a crumpled piece of a picture painted of you in someone else's hands that resembled nothing you ever imagined you'd represent. Be heard, be loud, let it resonate until the walls disintegrate. Watch the dust settle with only the prints of your feet left as evidence you ever stood still. Because domestic violence has no place in our community, we shine a purple light for anyone who needs help. Remember the victims who lost their lives. Support the survivors and give hope to those still living with domestic violence. Please share this information. Ask someone if they need help. And if you see something, say something. Please note that all of the resources mentioned today will be listed on the screen at the end of this program. Thanks for watching Community Voices. Golden tongued wisdom whispers at my plexus door, humbling love letter. Past pain is labor, birthing the best formula. Life experience. The lead dancer, safe, hands inviting. Let's go breathe in the evening moon. Let me ask my darling, still mapping my tomb, despite his heavy hands and words berating. Love, not insulted, waits across the room. Today, my fear feels weak. A dollar store trash bag on fumes. Hey, do you want to? Always negotiating. Want to go breathe in the evening moon? Truth has been with me since before the womb. A silent, shimmering blue. Expecting, constant, this lighthouse beams across the room. Unsteady, I lift my head, the once drunk bloom. I check my hard and soft feathers, divorcing. I choose to go sing to the evening moon. Tear at the roots, no more my abuser's heirloom. Yes, do it, the heart urges, encouraging. I hop, hobble, roll across the room. I am ready to touch the evening moon.